The first step, and I don't have an AMD graphics card, my sincerest apologies, um, but for the NVIDIA users out there and AMD users do something very similar. Now, I'll be honest with you, this did not help my stuttering, but I'm gonna start here. I wanna start here to make sure we have a good foundation, a good baseline to work off of, and then we'll work on getting this fix installed, okay? First things up, go to your NVIDIA control panel, uh, tab away from global settings and click on the program settings tab. Now, if you don't already have this game in your profiles, click on the button add and you're simply going to find and add Final Fantasy VII Remake. This one has the FF7 Remake with an underscore after the last E of Remake. That's the one you're looking for. So go ahead and click that. You're gonna create a profile like you see on screen. Now you can follow along and add everything that I have here just to make sure we're on the same template. I'm not using image scaling. I'm not using ambient occlusion. Um, anisotropic filtering has left application control. No FXAA, gamma correction is on. Anti-aliasing mode is application controlled. Um, transparency for AA is off. Background app max frame is off. Uh, CUDA GPUs is set to all. Here's the thing right here, low latency mode. If you have the option to select it to ultra, that's what I have done for my monitors. I would go ahead and recommend that you do the same. If not, select it to on, okay? Next up is max frame rate. I have that set to off. Some people may argue that you wanna select this on and put it about two to three frames beneath your maximum frame. You can give that a shot if that works for you, Awesome, for me, I left it globally off. Next up, if you have G-Sync, I actually have this turned on for my monitors. If you do not have G-Sync, no sweat, just put it on fixed refresh rate, okay? Moving on to the MFAA that's turned off, OpenGL. This is not an OpenGL game, you can skip that. Power management mode set to preferred maximum performance. Uh, the refresh rate of your monitor, make sure it's set to available at its highest, where it says highest available rather than application controlled, okay? Next up is texture filtering, anisotropic sampling optimization. Mine is set to off, okay? This next option, I did notice a performance increase when I set this to allow over clamp. Um, clamp, in theory, does look a little bit better on screen, but for some reason with this game, I don't notice a difference. But I do notice a performance boost with allow over clamp. I have seen it with my own eyes. I'm like, oh, wow, setting it to allow actually gave me a FPS increase. So do yourself a favor and select allow. Texture filtering, I have set to quality over high quality. Uh, texture filtering, trilinear optimization set to on. Um, optimization on, triple buffering on with VSync uh, on. You don't need triple buffering on. This is really for open GL games coupled with VSync. So you could technically leave this off. I have mine on because why not? I, I actually have VSync on with all of my games because I don't want any of the tearing. So um, if you don't want VSync on, just simply turn it off and leave triple buffering off. And then the virtual reality thing doesn't really matter. You can leave it to one. So, and then once you're finished with this, make sure you hit apply at the bottom right corner to apply those settings. And then that's it. Like I said earlier, this really didn't fix my issue at all. There was still massive stuttering, no matter how many times I went in here, it didn't seem to fix anything. So I'm willing to bet you ran into the same issue where you came in here and you were following other YouTubers and you would go in your game and there would be like literally no change. Same here. I wanted to start here to make sure we have a good solid baseline. So that's great. Let me go ahead and set that aside with the control panel piece. Next up, you're gonna head over to the Nexus mods. I'll be sure to put the links in the description box below so you can find it a little easier. The first thing actually, now that I say first thing, it's actually the only thing you'll be downloading that I stop and think about it. It's gonna be the FF7 hook INI, right? This right here is very, very important. Make sure that you are signed into Nexus mods or you won't be able to download this. So be sure to sign in first, come to this link here. Now, these guys have already put a very detailed uh, instruction under the description pa uh, tab on how to install this, but we're gonna go over that together in this video. That's the, you know, that is the meat and potatoes of this video is basically, let's do this together. Let's have a visual aid on how we get from end to end, start to finish on how we get this, this game running like butter. Next up, go to the files tab. Now you have two options. You can go to the main files section 
or old files section. We're gonna be focusing on the top main files section for this video, all right? Click on manual download, and then the next screen, you're gonna choose between slow download and premium. So if you're a paying member of Nexus Mods, click on premium. If you're not, click on slow download, download the zip file. And so what does that look like? All right, I've already downloaded it. The zip file is gonna be just like this, FF7 hook and a bunch of numbers everywhere. Extract that on your desktop for simplicity or on one of your storage drives, totally up to you. For simplicity's sake, I'm keeping it on the desktop. The folder looks like this here. And once you open that folder up, it look, the context of that folder is this right here. You're gonna have two files. One is an engine uh, INI configuration setting file. The other one is a DLL file that's labeled X input one underscore three. So we are going to be extracting these two in two separate places. I have to stop and pause and say that. Don't just go and grab these and dump them in the directory where the game is. That's not how this works. One of them, yes. And we're going to go over that right now. The first file that we're going to talk about extracting is the X input one underscore three. Let's focus our attention on that one. So let's go ahead and set this aside. Now, where do we drop this thing off at? So for Steam users, where do you have Final Fantasy VII Remake installed? For Steam users, it's gonna be your local drive or C drive in my case, and then program files x86. You guys know the directory by now, right? Steam and then Steam apps, the folder called common, then Final Fantasy VII Remake, another folder called end, and then another folder called binaries, and then finally Win64. Within this directory, you're going to see the FF7 remake with the underscore after that last E. This is the correct directory. You're going to go ahead and paste right from that folder I showed you earlier. You're going to copy or cut this, this file, this X input file in the directory of where you installed Final Fantasy VII remake. For Epic Games users, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I pulled up the website where the game should be installed at, and it should be for Epic Games, C program files, not x86, but program files, Epic Games in the name of your game. And in this case, it should be Final Fantasy VII Remake or Final Fantasy VII Integrate. I don't know what it's called for Epic Games, but that's where you'll go and basically do what I just said for Steam users is drop that file in that directory. So that's step number one, all right? Now, step number two, what about this other file, this engine I and I file, where on earth does that go? Well, you're in luck. I went ahead and have it all set up for you right here. Let me go ahead and minimize this for simplicity's sake to keep things clean. Now, how did I get here? It's very interesting. It's not that interesting, but you'll see what I mean. It's not in your typical spot is what I meant to say. First, if you're in Windows 10 or, or 11, you're gonna head over to your documents folder, right? So we'll just start over. You'll go to documents and then my games. Within my games, you'll click on Final Fantasy VII Remake folder. And then within this folder, you'll click on saved and then config. Now, here's the thing. When you're in config, if you haven't done this mod just yet, I'm willing to bet that you do not have a folder called Windows No Editor. I did not have this folder. And like many of us, I started freaking out. I'm like, I don't have that folder. Oh my God. You start going online. No sweat, just take a chill pill because all you have to do is just right click, create a brand new folder and call it Windows No Editor. Exactly how I have it spelled with a capital W, N and E. Make sure that you create a brand new folder, okay? Within that folder, right? Let me take you back over to this folder here. Remember this one here with the engine I and I? You're gonna cut or copy this out of here and you're gonna simply drop it in this folder, the Windows No Editor folder. Drop the engine INI folder in here, okay? We are almost done, I promise you. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do from here. One, you can either keep the game in DirectX 12, which is the native API for Final Fantasy VII Remake. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna go back to DirectX 11, you can do that personally, I did that. The game seemed to be a little smoother, but I have played it in 12 and it's perfectly fine. How do we do that? How do we add an argument into, let's say Steam, for instance, go ahead and pull up Steam, find your game off to the left in your library, right click the game for Final Fantasy VII Remake, go to properties, okay? Now within properties is come up with this window here. This is general. At the very bottom, you're gonna find launch options for your arguments. In here, you'll type minus DX11, no space. 
that's it. It's that simple. You don't need to hit enter. You don't need to confirm, blah, blah, blah. All you do is, is hit that and close it out. Now the game will be running in DX11. What about Epic Games users? What do you do? So here is a page that shows exactly how to do that for Epic Games. So let me go ahead and scroll through this and find it. I had it earlier and it moved up. So it looks like for Epic Games, you're gonna open the launcher. You're gonna click on settings on the bottom left side, scroll down to the bottom and select the desired game, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And you're gonna tick the additional command line arguments box and then write your argument in there. It's gonna be the same as Steam users. It's gonna be minus DX11. And a good example of this is right here. This example shows Metro Exodus, but pretend that says Final Fantasy VII Remake. You're gonna see this window here and in your command line type in minus DX11. That's for you Epic Games users out there. Okay, so Steam and Epic Games for DX11 has been covered. Let me set that aside. Now, the next thing that you're gonna to have to do is use the settings that I have created. Now, I didn't create this on my own. I found and leveraged what the community has collectively put in together with a couple tweaks that I made actually yesterday in the middle of my stream that helped out the uh, game smooth out tremendously. So much, in fact, I had to do this tutorial video. So what am I talking about here? So in the engine.ini, you are going to erase what's already in there go clean slate, drop this. I'm gonna put all this information in the description box below. I really hope this works out that I can do this. So drop all of this in here, all right? No changes are required. Just simply hit Control A, Control C, copy paste, drop it in there. Make sure you hit File Save or Control S to save. And then you should be able to fire up your game from then on out and it should work. Um, there's a couple, there's one setting that you want to do in the, the menu in Final Fantasy VII. You want to lower your shadows to low. That's it. You can keep the textures on high. I personally lowered the shadows to low and that really seemed to help out. It will run with shadows on high, but with low, it runs even smoother, uh, my opinion. So, so the change that I made within all of this, right? is I discovered, for those of you that care about this, I discovered that this section right here, let me blow this up for you. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, it's right here under texture and other detail quality. This pull size by default was 3,800, okay? The streaming max temp memory allowed by default was 512, all right? Clearly, these are talking about um, RAM and memory usage allocations, right? That's what it's talking about here. Now, I went through some testing. I lowered that 5 down, that 512 down to 256, 128, 96. I tried all those. I ended up landing on 64, okay? And then I went down to streaming pool size. This kind of controls your low textures and high textures of when it converts or when it streams in. If you go really low in like the thousands, you'll get really low muddy looking textures. So what I did is I found a really good balance of high textures and high frame rate, no stuttering. So I lowered the 3800 down to 3000, and then I hit Control S to save, and then what do you know? <laughs> the game started running like butter. I'm not even joking, it started running like super smooth. Another a setting that you can do here is this full screen mode seemed to help me out, where you can say, make this full screen exclusive mode rather than like a borderless windowed mode. Um, make sure you set that to one, which it already is, but if you don't want that, just untack that, hit zero, hit control say, or uh, S to save, okay? If you don't want exclusive full screen mode. Another thing too is, and again, this file already has it set for you. Um, this also helped with my frames and stuttering. The max FPS equals zero. That was another line that tremendously skyrocketed my performance. And I'm not trying to make that sound dramatic. It seriously like boosted my performance so good that it should have been like that since day one purchase. Now. You can go a step further and, and remove the hashtag right here, the remark, and set, like force set your resolution to whatever resolution your monitor is. So if you have 1440p, 1080p, blah, 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 set that number here. And the F stands for full screen is what that F is for. But that's entirely up to you. I just commented that out because I didn't really need it. I felt like everything was running perfectly fine as is. Um, guys, that's, that's it for this little mod. You're gonna run the game now. Um, if you made it to the end of this video, I'm actually going to boot up Final Fantasy VII right now and show off just how smooth 
all of this actually comes into fruition. Okay, so here we are in the game and I did mute the music because uh, Square Enix in this title just loves to throw out copyright claims all over the place. I was doing lives and I got two to three copyright claims for every stream I did because of their music. So awesome, music's on mute for now. So listen, once you're in here, um, this is what I did. I went to options, right? Went to graphic settings. Um, it'll say borderless full screen, even though I have it forced in full screen, disregard that. Set your resolution, text resolution should be on high. Uh, shadow resolution, personally, I put it on low. I found the shadows look pretty much identical. When you're in motion, you don't even notice the difference when you're in motion. You're running around, you're fighting, blah, blah, blah. You don't even, you can't even tell unless you really, really stop and look. So set it on high. If it gives you the warm fuzzies, it makes you sleep at night knowing you have it on high shadow resolution. Trust me, I'm one of those kind of people. However, with this game, putting on low resolution for shadows, it gave me an FPS boost. And to be quite honest, I don't notice a difference. I do notice a difference with texture resolution on low and high. So uh, text resolution, high, shadow resolution, low. Frame rate, now let's talk about this. This is gonna be, um, set this to 90 or 120 no matter what your resolution is on your monitor or your, your hertz is. The reason being is because with 90 and 120, they actually got rid of the dynamic um, resolution scaling, I think it's called, the DRS. I forget the actual name, that may have been it. Uh, but if you set it to 90 or 120, it gets rid of that and it makes the game uh, a little bit sharper. Not that much, because TAA is very heavily used. However, in my engine.ini settings that you just pasted in there, I lowered the blurriness of TAA for us, okay? The TAA, you definitely want it on because with it off, it's like jaggy city or jagged city. It's, it's really bad. It looks clearer, but jagged edges are everywhere. It's really bad. So with TAA on, you know what it does. It cleans it up, makes it look good and smooth. However, the default TAA, in my opinion, was way too soft and it made things look very blurry like the consoles. So I actually lowered the settings or the intensity of TAA in that file for us and it looks a little bit clearer and and just the right amount of taa so just a friendly heads up there so set that to 120 my opinion and then uh character displayed you can mess around with this the default is eight but i noticed some people missing in the background at eight um nine is actually pretty capped and maxed out i have it on 10 again warm fuzzies moment there you could technically get away with nine and see everybody on screen no issues whatsoever eight and less, you'll start to see people pop in. So just a heads up there. Uh, if you wanna reduce uh, the load, put it on nine. So just a heads up there. I have it on 10 because I don't even know why. Uh, I don't even talk about HDR because it's terrible the way it's implemented here. And that's really it. So the real um, meat and potatoes of the graphic settings is set that shadow resolution down to low and put that frame rate to 90 or 120. Okay, that should really help you out. So what we're gonna do from here is let's go ahead and crank up a new game. And then I'm gonna show you just how smooth or much smoother the game does run. Unfortunately, I don't have a save file to take us into the towns like Wall Market or any of that, uh, anything like that. So I just don't have that. There won't be any music right now and that's fine. But as you can tell, look at how smooth this is actually running. It's running like butter smooth. Right, it's and uh, quick tip if you have two monitors, if you have dual or triple monitors or multi monitor setup, make sure that your mouse is clicked on the game window. I just realized my mouse was activated on another monitor and it made the game slightly stuttery, just a, just a little bit. I can see it, but if you actually move your mouse back over to the Final Fantasy VII Remake screen, it brings the GPU power right back, back into exclusive full screen mode and the game runs a lot smoother. So just a quick tip for you multi-monitor users out there, make sure you click on the game that you're playing the screen on for a smooth experience. I can't tell you how many times I click off for chat or whatever in OBS and the game runs a little bad. I'm like, what just happened? Well, click on your monitor, thank me later. <laughs> All right, so this is the footage here. What I'm gonna do is do my best to kind of show you some gameplay here on just how smooth. It goes in between cutscenes and stuff. You're up. This right here used to stutter quite a bit, right? You're coming with us. Nice and easy. Don't think so. Not bad. There you go. Now remember last time without the fix, if you guys recall, once you run right here and you you take that hard left, there was a stutter right there immediately. This fixes that. 
You see? It goes right into the cutscene. There's no stopping and pausing on a frame. It's really weird without the music, but that's okay. You see how seamless and smooth that was? So here we go. This is another spot. Right here, whenever you're fighting these guys, it would stutter a lot right here. We all know it. We've all seen it, right? So now it's smooth. It's butter. Running around. There's no, there's no stuttering. There's none of that stuff. Even in between cutscene transitions, it just goes right into the scene, right? Drop the weapon. So here's some more footage. How smooth the transition is. Yeah, what he said. Yep. So let's check out this battle scene. A lot of sparks. A lot of graphics. A lot of art. Uh, you know, a lot of that stuff that's going on. You're coming with us. And this is where the game would stutter nope. quite a bit. You know. Here we go. It's over. There you go. Not bad. You remember where all this was stuttering, right? This fix takes care of all that. And another stutter section, if you guys remember, as soon as you open up all these chests and stuff and you, and you walk outside, the game would stutter massively, right? right? When you walk through those archways over there, check this out. Let me open this up real quick and I'll show what I'm talking about. So as soon as you pick this up and you run over here, you guys know what I'm talking about. As soon as you, as soon as you walk around this pillar and you walk outside to that archway, the game stuttered every single time right and now it just works see look at that you walk in and out of here and there's no stuttering whatsoever it's it's bananas like this whole fix i'm so glad i discovered this and i'm serious i really hope this video and everything i'm showing here helps you as well um i'll let this cutscene run in the background but listen, before you take off, again, drop a like, sub if, you, if you'd like, if you dig the energy here. I go live. I'm streaming this game right now, live today in the coming days. Uh, that's number one. Number two, um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, any of that stuff, drop a comment down below. I'm very active in my uh, comment section. I'll get to you as soon as I can, and hopefully we can all come together collectively and get this game running uh, even better for us PC users. All right? That's going to do it for this video. I really appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.